So I recently had a bunch of questions over on Instagram about everything related to my chickens and chicken keeping style, basically. So I am going to do, here my Halloween pumpkin. <laughs> I'm going to do a walk through the coop and talk about why I have it set up the way that I do and why I've rearranged it a few times since I've had it. Because if you've watched my earlier chicken keeping videos, it's been changed around quite a few times. So here's Mama P, Miss Penelope, the best chicken. Yeah, are you the best chicken? <laughs> so she's coming with me. I'm sure she'll ditch me. But we're going to go and give you guys a grand old tour of the chicken coop. Keep in mind, mine's not, you know, one of those fancy, beautiful coops that you see on Instagram, but it's functional and it keeps the girls happy and safe. So let's go take a look. All right, so here is the coop from the outside in all of its <laughs> rustic glory. I have rose bushes behind those baby gates that are protected because the chickens like to eat them. And you know, there's the scrap pile of metal roofing that will get used for something else. I have a tarp over right now because I was trying to give them some extra shade over the winter. I do plan on making like with some of that roofing <laughs> a little covered roof area hopefully this winter because the tarp's not going to hold up to snow obviously but if we do a metal roof that will be fine. So the stats on the chicken coop it is eight by eight and eight feet tall. I'm not sure exactly how tall the top part is, but the main part of it is eight by eight by eight. On the outside, I used hardware cloth. I chose hardware cloth because it is sturdier and safer than chicken wire. A chicken could stick their head through chicken wire and get it bit off or a predator could bite through or, you know, stick a hand through the chicken wire. And I've seen dogs just tear that apart. So if you're building a coop, I 100% recommend hardware cloth. The prettier way to connect two pieces would obviously be run a board along the length and staple it. But we were going for um, quick and cheap. So zip ties have worked just fine for us. I did the addition of hot wire. This is off right now. I only have it on at night. The hot wire is to keep anything from trying to climb on this or push through it. It's on at night or if I'm not home and the chickens are locked up. If I had to make a change to this, I would put it higher up because in the winter when it snows, I do get issues and I have to shovel it out. So I may at some point try and remove these and redo them. It's just kind of hard because these are nailed in. On the ground, a lot of people will dig chicken wire or... Um, hardware cloth straight down. Our ground was really, really solid and it was near impossible for me to dig down. So instead I took 18 inches of chicken wire and it's laid out along the ground. And then I just put gravel over top of it. One, to try and keep the weeds down. And two, it's also just another deterrent for anything that would want to dig underneath it. On the top, I have, this is actually deer netting, but a netting to keep any aerial predators out. If I had it my way, I would have also done hardware cloth along the top to make this, you know, like super sturdy Fort Knox with chicken coops, but that is more expensive than we wanted to spend. All right, toddler distraction. <laughs> so it's kind of dark in here, so I will try and show at angles. Inside, there is um, chicken wire buried underneath. I could have done hardware cloth, but I wasn't too concerned about it on the bottom. I chose to go with a dirt floor with, you know, the wire for safety instead of a solid floor for two reasons. One, if you're doing a solid floor, you're going to have to be cleaning whatever mulch you put on top of it pretty constantly or it's going to be rotting the floorboards. And two, because chicken poop is a really liquidy a lot of the liquid just gets dissolved into the ground. So that helps. Yes, Penelope. <laughs> that helps with quite a bit of the mess. I have two feeders in here currently hanging up to keep mice and such things from getting in them. I have this extra panel here just because the girls nest or roost here and I don't want, you know, their little booties hanging over pooping in them. It's also why I have this up here. Um, 
my roosting bars, I just kind of add as I feel like I need more. I started with less and they took up a whole side because I started with five chickens and now I've got 32 or 34. I don't know. I'm not taking the time to count, but I have a lot more chickens than I originally had. So I needed to just completely change the layup. The same with the nesting boxes. I started out with five, so they were in a different area and now I have way more. So they needed to get moved. These are old dresser drawers that I spray painted. They have worked really, really well, although they did not enjoy being moved around a bunch and the bottoms fell out of some. So I've reinforced them a bunch. This one doesn't really get used. They drop pooping in through that gap, <laughs> which is why that one's dirty. But otherwise they work really well. And then I have just started with these. Um, these are like a Rubbermaid dresser plastic drawers. My husband wasn't using the dresser anymore. So I asked him if I could try a few of those in here. And so far the girls have been using them just fine. They like them really well. I do have a few of these um, ceramic eggs from Mana Pro still. This one is pretty dirty clearly, but it really does work. If you put in a new box, put one of these in and they'll start laying in it. I have one over in that box as well, but my kids broke it. <laughs> um, but those work really well. I have been going through and adding siding when we work in the barn. I come through and put the like random end pieces in here. One, because it looks nicer and eventually I'll be able to power spray this off. Like you can see, all that's poopy, but I really don't want to get this material wet. So eventually it'll be covered with boards of some sort and then I can come through, you know, once or twice a year and just power spray the entire inside to clean it out. <clears throat> I did use an actual window in here, um, mostly because it does get super cold in the winter. You know, we had negative 50 with wind chill a few years ago and this is just like the same window you'd put in your house. I can close it. It lets in plenty of light and air. I have a mirror in here. And the mirror, some people have asked, is one for light. It's bouncing off the sunlight and reflecting it in here because I have no power, no light in here. And two, it's actually really good um, for like chicken entertainment. So I used to have, again, when I only had five chickens in here, I had um, a dresser top and that's what the buckets were underneath. And then the mirror was at top and the girls loved it but that's not there anymore. Eventually I do plan on filling this whole wall with different antique mirrors that I'm going to spray paint different colors. And I think it will be really fun. Um, for my nesting boxes, I do have a whole video on this, which I hope you guys have seen about why I do not use pine shavings. They are toxic. Cedar shavings are toxic, not pine. Actually it's both. Go check out my video and then read the article. <laughs> So I use hay because I have horses and I get scrap hay. It's easy enough. On the video I posted, I asked people, hey, what do you use? Because I want to know. One of the biggest responses I got was leaves, which I think is awesome and pretty brilliant. <laughs> so, so if you're looking for alternatives to the store-bought bedding for nesting boxes, be sure to check out that video and read through the comments because there's a lot of really good suggestions in there. Um, for new chicken owners, one thing you want to remember when you are doing your nesting boxes and your roosting bars, you want the roosting bars higher than the nesting boxes. The chickens always want to sleep somewhere up high and if you have them lower, the chickens are going to be sleeping in your nesting boxes and covering them in poop. I did not have a problem with that at all until I got five Easter eggers handed down from my sister-in-law. Maybe it was four. I can't remember. <laughs> so many chickens. But anyways, I got chickens handed down for my sister-in-law and they had never been on a roosting bar before. So the fact that these were a little low, they were like, oh, we're going to sleep in here. So I had to rearrange and lower these and raise the roosting bars a little bit to make it not so enjoyable because this one used to be way up here, but it works fine as it is. In the summer, I do have this top access for the girls. A lot of them like to sleep along that edge. So again, I just took an extra piece of siding and put it there so they're not pooping directly into the nesting boxes. They're probably half of my flock roosts up 
all summer, spring, fall. It's only in the winter I cover, like where that panel is, the whole thing gets covered and they are all down here. Um, I do that for the winter icing. That's big and drafty. And I mean, there will still be airflow, which you always want good airflow in a coop because they can get sick with the dust and the, like the poop breakdown and all that grossness. But I do not do any artificial heating in my coop over winter. That is a huge fire hazard. There's no way you could pay me to put any heat source in with my chickens. So I board it up, put insulated um, styrofoam above that, and then the chickens will all hang out right here and their heat kind of bounces around in this one area and they are fine. This is the door out to my second run. I do plan on replacing this with another window just because one that's sturdier, the window will become, I'll take the screen out and it will become like a sliding door for them like I have in the mini coop. Um, it's sturdier, you know, a little more light. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if we get 50 below in the winter, I can keep this door closed and just open that one for them to go out and it, they'll have a much warmer space to hang out in. So their food, as I said, used to be inside, but because I have way more chickens, I needed this space. So the food is out here underneath this tarp, which like I said, it's gonna be an actual roof here, hopefully this winter. I keep in here the feed, which I just get 16% layer feed from the local like farm store. It works great for my chickens. There are, you know, I've seen up to 20% layer feeds. Um, if you are really particular, you know, non-GMO organic diet, you may want to look into a higher quality feed for your chickens because you are eating eggs. If you have a super strict diet, your chickens probably need a super strict diet. This is fine for mine because they get treats all day and they free range. So this has been fine. I've never had an issue with egg production or quality. I do mix some diatomaceous earth in with this when I fill their buckets. Um, it's a little controversial. Some people swear that it's great for cleaning up, you know, any parasites that the chickens may have. And some people say it does absolutely nothing. At the end of the day, it's not going to hurt the chickens. So I mix it in there. If it does nothing, whatever. If it does something, great. I'm just adding in an extra way to prevent parasites in my chickens. There are some great um, feed through pellets that you can get that you mix in with the feeds that are like herbal dewormers that I do a couple times a year just, just because, you know, why not? And then of course I always mix apple cider vinegar in their water. Um, I always keep out a bucket of poultry grit and oyster shells. I think the oyster shells are really, really important for the hens because they need that extra calcium to continue making wonderful eggs. For now, that is what I use as a water bucket. Last winter, I had like a heated dog water dish that I used. This year, I'm going to try an insulated bucket that has the um, nipple waters on it. So you know, whenever I get that, I will keep you guys updated on how that does. And then for snacks, they get mealworms, which they love the mealworms, and cracked corn, which you can see they're not as excited about the cracked corn. <laughs> and then I use um, barn lime. Whenever I clean the coop, I sprinkle this around it knocks down the smell it can kill bugs and nasty stuff so this is really good diatomaceous earth kind of does the same thing so you could use either or or both or whatever but i just sprinkle that throughout the coop and in the nesting boxes when i clean them um what else would this be i think that's about it with the feeds somewhere buried in here i have um an electrolyte that's full of vitamins in case i feel like mixing in their water if it, the temperatures swung a lot. I do have some corid powder in here. Uh, see, here's my rooster booster, <laughs> which I only add this in every once in a while, but it's good to have on hand. And then I have corid powder, which I have never had to use, but I keep it on hand because it's better to have it than not. I'm happy I've never had to use it because you can't eat the eggs for a while after you use that, but I'd rather have to than 
have chickens die if it came to it. So, um, another thing I will probably do this winter, um, last year Mana Pro had sent me a bunch of chicken products to test out and we really, really liked their Omega Egg Maker. So I think this winter when the chickens do not have access to all this fresh greenery and bugs that they're finding, I'm going to buy more of the Omega Egg Maker to just mix in with their feed and keep them happy and healthy all winter. Now, in terms of what do I do to keep my chickens laying over winter, um, I do nothing. I do not provide them with artificial light. I feel like if their bodies naturally need them to take a break, I am going to let them take a break. That being said, I was provided with eggs all last winter. I think that's due to two reasons. One of them is planning ahead. I got chickens, chicks in the spring, so they would start laying in the fall and they would be laying consistently when the older girls were taking a break. And two, they do have good food between the food that I give them and the snacks and anything extra I might throw in there. Their bodies were supported enough that I was still getting eggs even without artificial light. It was not as regularly, you know, I wasn't getting an egg every single day, but still a few times a week and <laughs> a lot of my hens are older. So that's not a bad thing. Um, the Cochins, if any of you have watched, I did end up with nine roosters. So I have five hens and nine roosters from that batch of 14. The roosters are going to start being rehomed. I think this weekend three are going to a new home. And then the rest of them, we will just kind of see. They all behave pretty well for the most part now, but nine roosters eat a lot. And I don't need that many. So they will slowly be finding new homes. Another really good question I got about my chickens is herbs or produce from the garden that you can grow for your chickens. So I don't really grow any produce specifically for them. They already get the snacks or overflow. So, <laughs> you know, we, we basically share the garden. Um, herbs, there are a lot of herbs that are really good for chickens. Um, I'm not going to sit here and list them all because there are a lot. But I will say I planted thyme and yarrow and bee balm around my chicken coop area because I know those are all safe for them if they want to eat them. And they're perennials here, which is the big thing. I'm not gonna be planting things specifically for the chickens here every year. So far they have not eaten any of it, which surprised me a little bit, but that's okay. Um, there are great companies that make dried herb mixes that you either mix in as a feed with your chickens or that you can put in the nesting boxes. I don't do either of those currently because I haven't felt the need, but if that is something you are interested in, there's definitely a lot of companies that do a really good job with that. Um, another thing with my chickens is that they are free range, but that only applies to when I am home. Luckily for them, I am home 90% of the time. So if I'm home, they can go out. I usually let them out at about 10 a.m which is after you know most of the morning predators would get put away. And then they go back to the coop at night whenever they feel it's necessary. Usually they're, they tuck themselves in around 7, 7.30. Um, the reason I do not let them out when I am not home is because we do have um, a good bit of predator pressure from like birds of prey. I see hawks and falcons and owls and eagles on a regular basis. The dogs bark and let me know and then I usually run around outside screaming like a banshee <laughs> so that the birds know that they are not welcome here. So far that has worked fine but if I'm not here there's you know nothing to really stop something from picking off a bird because the dogs don't have access to everywhere that the chickens do. The chickens are smaller so they can get in a lot more areas and we do not have perimeter fencing up. So they could wander to the neighbors, wander across the street into the cornfield, go get lost in the woods somewhere. A coyote or a fox or a stray dog could run through and you know, they'll happily wipe out your entire flock. So I, I like to keep them locked up. It just gives me a little more peace of mind if I'm not here to kind of be a helicopter mommy for them. The other good question I got was about how to pick breeds that are good for your climate. Um, 
One of the main ways is Google. <laughs> Or a lot of the hatcheries, if they have magazines, they'll say, you know, are they cold hardy? Are they, you know, extreme heat hardy? They, they kind of give you a good idea. The best way is to do your own research. And obviously there's always outliers and it depends on how your coop is built. And if you have some weird weather year. Um, I haven't really done too much about that. The only thing is I don't have silkies. I would love silkies. They're adorable. I know they're not cold hardy. I think they would be fine here because my coop is pretty well set up and I, you know, winterize it pretty well, but I also don't want to take the chance of having a chicken popsicle. So for now, no silkies for me. Hi, that's Charlotte. She is one of my buff Orpingtons. She's just over a year old. Her sister Freya is running around somewhere Freya usually gets lost. Charlotte's much smarter. But, oof, hot mess. <laughs> um, that's the, the gist of why I do things the way I do with my chickens and whatnot. If you have any questions that I missed, let me know and I will answer in the comments. Um, a lot of it is just using Google. The internet is such a great resource to go, can I feed them this? What breed works here? How should I set up X, Y, Z? What type of feed do they use? Do your research. Don't listen to some random person on the internet. <laughs> just because I have chickens and they're doing well doesn't mean I'm, you know, the end of the game and you should copy everything I do. It's worked well for me, but I am pretty anal about animal care. So, all right. My egg customers just rolled in. I will catch you guys next time. And I hope you got some, some good knowledge from this. And like I said, leave a comment if you have any other questions.